Good morning. It is good to be here, and I want to thank all of those who are helping out this morning. And I thought I better check my phone before I came up to preach to make sure I didn't get a text from Sam. <laughs> and I didn't, so I guess we're good to go. <laughs> so it, it is a blessing uh, to be here, particularly on this um, Memorial Day uh, weekend when we remember all of those who have gone before us and have given their lives for our benefit. So as we turn to our scripture this morning, we're looking at the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Let's open our hearts and our minds to God's word. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would join me in prayer. Gracious God, we are grateful that on this Sabbath morning we are able to gather together. Whether it be here in your house in person or through the technology of being online, we are grateful, God, for the opportunity to gather to worship you. And on this Memorial Day weekend to remember, God, all of those who have sacrificed. Sacrificed their families, sacrificed their health, and particularly those who sacrificed their life so that we are able to be here this morning to worship you. God, we pray that as we have heard your word for us today, that your Holy Spirit is at work among us and within us, that we may hear it anew today. We pray, God, that the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth may be acceptable to you. Amen. Every once in a while, and actually we're getting into that season where it's going to happen more frequently, we hear those familiar alarming beeps from the TV. And we run to the TV to see what's happening and we see a message across the bottom or the top telling us that there is a severe storm warning or there's a tornado warning. And maybe if you're like me, not only do we get that on the TV, but I get it on my phone. My phone tells me not only when it's going to storm, but when it's even going to rain. And I think last week was like the first time in this season of spring that I had a severe storm warning on my phone. So with all the technology that's available to us, it's less likely than ever that a storm or a tornado will happen without some kind of warning. In our scripture passage, it had been a good day for the disciples. They had been able to spend most of the day listening to Jesus preach along the Sea of Galilee. There were no signs, no warnings of any storms. A huge crowd had gathered. The day is now over and Jesus is worn out. And he needs a break. He truly needs to get away. So he's already in a boat that he had used for preaching, so he tells the disciples to weigh the anchor and cast off into the lake. And Jesus is so exhausted that he falls asleep on a cushion in the stern of the boat. Now the Sea of Galilee is in the northern part of Israel. It's really not very large. It's only about 13 miles long. So actually it's more of a lake than a sea. But it was very important because fishermen made their living from the Sea of Galilee. It was an important part of the landscape of the region. 
It was important for scripture because in many ways it served as Jesus' headquarters. Much of his ministry took place there. He had called many of his disciples from the area. But the truth is, storms on the Sea of Galilee are quite common. And there was usually never any warning. The Sea of Galilee sits 600 feet below sea level. It's about 150 feet deep. And because it's so far below sea level and it's surrounded by mountains, it's susceptible to sudden storms. 20 feet waves are possible. So when you're out on the Sea of Galilee, it can be completely calm one minute and a violent storm the next. And so it just happened that on this particular day, a violent storm came up. Now, if we think about the storms of life, there are all kinds of storms in life. Sometimes we see and we heed the warning signs of a coming storm. But other times, the storm strikes without warning. They may be personal storms, storms that are raging in our hearts and minds, storms in our marriages, in our families, storms with our children, storms like the loss of a loved one, a divorce, the loss of a job or financial problems, Storms of alcoholism and drug addiction. Storms of illness. Storms rage in our country and in our world and even in our churches. Who could have ever imagined that we would live through a pandemic? People have died, a million people have died. People have been very sick. And we now find ourselves living in a totally different way because of it. There continues to be unrest and division in our country. And we see the potential division in the United Methodist Church. And all kinds of storms, whatever they might be, bring some element of fear, some portion of danger, some amount of grief and anxiety and jealousy and anger and even bitterness. And we know that there are no guarantees against a sudden storm in life. Too often, people mistakenly think that because we're faithful followers of Jesus, we're then protected from all the troubles of life. That if we follow Jesus, if we're Christians, then we will always have success. We will never get sick. We'll never have disappointments. We'll never have troubled marriages and families but we all sit here and know that that is not true. Just because Jesus is in the boat doesn't mean that a sudden storm won't happen. Those things do happen, but the difference, and truly it makes all the difference in the world is the fact that Jesus is right in the boat with us, regardless of the storm we face. Jesus never promised us a life without problems, but he did promise us, I am with you always. It may be tough to be in a storm with Jesus, but imagine being in one without him. It's also true that sometimes the storm is so severe and so unexpected that it is really hard to find Jesus in the midst of it. And that may be true for you today. Maybe you're living in the midst of a storm today. Maybe you're recovering from a recent storm. And I have to tell you that I have no words to explain the storms of life. It would seem that they are just part of our life. And some people may be tempted to say, well, you know, those storms of life just make us stronger. And I do think to some degree that's true but that's much easier to see after the storm has passed. Let me tell you that it's really not helpful to tell someone in a crisis that whatever is going on in their life is worth it because it's gonna make them stronger. That's really the last thing they probably need to hear. But I do believe as Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that now we only see in part 
but the time will come when we fully understand. I think our lives are going to look entirely different from a heavenly viewpoint. And maybe then we'll be able to understand why things happened as they did. We might then be able to see God's purpose and plan. But I also think that it's entirely possible in the glory of heaven that it no longer happens, no longer matters, I should say. That we'll forget all about those storms of life. And here's another thing about storms. What the disciples experienced that day on the Sea of Galilee, and sometimes it happens to us as well, it seems that God isn't doing anything. That we're going through this storm all alone, and God seems to be absent. We've all felt it. We relate to those disciples waking Jesus up and saying, Teacher, look what's happening here. Teacher, we're going to die. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? There is nothing in this world that God cannot do. And so we ask, why isn't God doing something? Why isn't God helping me? Why isn't God healing me? Why isn't God stopping random acts of violence? Why didn't God heal our loved ones that we have lost? Trust me, we are all in the same boat, so to speak, when it comes to those questions. We have all sat there in the boat with our hearts heavy and our doubts unending. And we all have the same questions going on in our minds. Why did this happen? How did this happen? What's going to happen next? And we're not quite sure how to deal with them. And Christians for centuries have struggled with exactly the same thing. We say that we have faith. We say that we are strong in our faith. But when the times of crisis come, we have this deep, dark fear that we have been left alone. We feel abandoned. Now remember in our scripture that during the storm, these experienced veteran fishermen who had been out in the Sea of Galilee hundreds of times, they were terrified. So I think that tells us about the severity of this particular storm. Their lives were in danger and yet there's Jesus sleeping soundly through it all. Maybe there have been times in the last months when it seemed that God was sleeping. That God was sleeping. That God wasn't helping us. That God wasn't giving us what we need. That God wasn't giving us what we wanted. And we too feel like saying, wake up, God. We need you. We need your help. But we need to remember in those times that God is at work in ways that we're not even aware of. God's plans and purposes for those and for us, people that we love are not subject to whims and accidents and circumstances or illnesses or evil. We stand on the assurance of Isaiah 43. Hear these words this morning. These are wonderful words. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. In the midst of all the challenges of life, the seasons of life from birth to death, one, things, one thing remains unchangeable. God is with us. God is with us on this earth and God continues to be with us in our eternal life. And Jesus is still in the business of stilling storms, whatever the storm might be. Jesus continues to speak to us if we will only stop 
and listen and hear. Peace, be still. Jesus affirms his presence with us even in the most dire of crises. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Have you ever noticed when you hear that verse that what Jesus is saying is through the valley? I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, we're not going to stay in that valley of life and death. Jesus is going to bring us through that valley to something better. And even when we doubt that there is anything that anyone can do, when we think there's just absolutely no solution to our problem, that not even Jesus can help us, we need to remember these words. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. No. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So even when we wonder why the storms have to happen at all, we can be comforted by the words that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purposes. Yes, Jesus is still in the business of stilling storms. I don't know what storm you might be going through today. I don't know what storm you might be coming out of or what storm you might be getting into. But when you do, remember Jesus' words. Remember Jesus' promise. Rest in the presence of Jesus. Rely on the power of Jesus, and you will make it to the other side. And as I close this morning, I stand here to say that it's not always as easy as it may sound. Because some ships do go down. Planes still crash. Cancer still kills. Accidents still happen. Families are still torn apart. Men still walk into schools and grocery stores and murder people, innocent people. The horror of war continues in Ukraine and other places in this world. It's not easy. It's hard to live in this world. But know this, that we can trust Jesus in the midst of the storm. Because the Christ of the boat is also the Christ of the cross. We believe in a God who loves us and has promised never to forsake us. We believe that no matter how dark the storm clouds may be, that behind those dark clouds the sun is still shining. And we believe that beyond every cross is an empty tomb. Let's pray. Gracious God, it's just a reality of who we are as human beings to face storms in life. Some seem manageable and others completely without solutions. And why we don't understand why these things happen and why it's very difficult to get through all these times. We know, God, that you are there to rescue us, that you are there to always be with us, no matter what might happen. And for that, we give you thanks and praise this day in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.